Welcome to our latest video, which has the title Understanding Amides. This video is suitable for A-level students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to name and draw the structural formula of both amides and substituted amides. You should also be able to explain how amides can be prepared from carboxylic acids and the preparation of substituted amides from the reactions of acid chlorides and primary amines. And finally, you should be able to describe the reactions of amides, including their hydrolysis and their conversion to nitriles using phosphorus 5 oxide. So let's start this video by looking at the structure of amides. Now, amides are derived from carboxylic acids, and a carboxylic acid has a COOH functional group. And in an amide, the OH part of this functional group is replaced by an NH2 group, an amino group. And amides therefore contain the C double bond O NH2 functional group. And an example of an amide is shown here on this slide. We have an amide with two carbons, and this amide is named a phanamide. Now, earlier in the course, when we studied amines, we came across the reaction of a primary amine and an acid chloride. And when those compounds react, we form a substituted amide. Now, a substituted amide is different from an ordinary or conventional amide, as one of the hydrogens on the NH2 group is replaced by an alkyl group. So here we have a phanamide, that's a conventional amide. And if we replace one of the hydrogens with an alkyl group, let's say a methyl group, we have a substituted amide. Now as a methyl group has replaced a hydrogen here and is bonded to a nitrogen, we name this substituted amide as N-methyl aphanamide. Now if we had a C2H5 group replacing a hydrogen, we would name it N-ethyl aphanamide. So this slide shows the reaction that takes place between an acid chloride and a primary amine. So here we have the acid chloride, ethanol chloride, and we have a primary amine, methyl amine. Now the primary amine is a nucleophile because there's a lone pair of electrons available on the nitrogen of the primary amine. And this would be attracted to the delta plus carbon of the acid chloride. Now hydrogen chloride would be eliminated here and we would have a substituted amide, N-methyl aphanamide. So my two products are the substituted amide, N-methyl aphanamide, and hydrogen chloride gas. So now let's test your understanding of what we've covered so far with some practice questions. Here's the first set of practice questions. Read for the questions, pause the video, have a go at them, and then we'll go for the answers. So this first question is asking you to draw the full structural formula of the following amides and substituted amides. So question 1a is asking you to draw the full structural formula of butanamide. So we would have four carbons in our chain. We would have a C double bond O, NH2 functional group. So I'm just putting the hydrogens in here now. And we have the full structural formula of butanamide, which is a CH3 bonded to a CH2 bonded to a CH2 bonded to a C double bond O, NH2. Now hexanamide would have six carbons in the chain, so I'm putting my six carbons in now, and then I would have a C double bond O, NH2 functional group, that is my amide functional group, and I'm just fitting the hydrogens now around the molecule, so my final molecule would be CH3, CH2, 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 C double bond O, NH2. So I'm then asked to draw the structural formula of n ethyl propanamide. So I'm going to draw three carbons first of all, and then I'm going to put a C double bond O, and then instead of an NH2, I'm going to put NH and a C2H5 group, because that's an ethyl group. And in a substituted amide, I'm replacing one of the hydrogens in the NH2 group with an alkyl group. In this case, it's a C2H5, because it's n ethyl and then I'm just going to fit the hydrogens around, and I have my final structure for N-ethyl propanamide. And for D, I'm asked to draw N-methyl butanamide. So I'm first going to draw four carbons here, and then a C double bond O, and then a nitrogen. And instead of NH2, I'm going to put a methyl group replacing one of the hydrogens. So it's N-methyl butanamide, 
And then all I'm going to do then is put in my hydrogens around the molecule, making sure that each carbon has four bonds. And my final structure is n methyl butanamide, and that is a substituted amide. So here's our second practice question. Once again, read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So question two is asking you to write chemical equations to show the reactions of acid chlorides and primary amines here. So question 2a is the reaction of propanol chloride and methylamine. So propanol chloride is CH3, CH2, C double bond O, Cl. And when you write chemical equations in organic chemistry, it's fine to draw out the full structural formula. So I'm drawing the full structural formula of propanol chloride here, and then I'm going to draw the full structural formula of methylamine. So methylamine is CH3, NH2. And when these compounds react, you form a substituted amide and hydrogen chloride gas. So I'm going to draw in the structure here of my substituted amide. So it is CH3, CH2, C double bond O, NH, and then it's going to be a CH3 group because it was methylamine that it was reacting with. And my other product is hydrogen chloride. Now, question 2b is asking me to write a chemical equation for ethanol chloride and ethyl amine when they react. So ethanol chloride is CH3, C double bond O, Cl. Ethyl amine is CH3, CH2, NH2. So I'm going to draw out the structures of both here. I've drawn ethanol chloride and the full structural formula of ethyl amine. And then when they react, I form my substituted amide and hydrogen chloride gas. So my substituted amide, it'll be CH3, C double bond O, NH. And this time it's an ethyl group replacing a hydrogen because it was an ethyl amine. So it'd be CH2, CH3 attached to the nitrogen. And my final product is HCl. So if I was asked to name these substituted amides that are formed here, the first substituted amide would be N-methyl propanamide because there's a methyl group attached to the nitrogen here. And my second substituted amide would be N-ethyl ethanamide because there's an ethyl group attached to the nitrogen. Now we've just seen how primary amines and acid chlorides can react together to form a substituted amide. Now if you wanted to make a conventional amide, an ordinary amide, you could make it directly from a carboxylic acid. All you would need to do is to add ammonium carbonate to a carboxylic acid and then heat it. And if you add ammonium carbonate to a carboxylic acid, you make an ammonium salt. And when that ammonium salt is heated, it dehydrates to produce an amide and water. So you can see I've drawn out two equations here to show you the reactions taking place. So here we have ethanoic acid reacting with ammonium carbonate. That would form an ammonium salt, and that ammonium salt would be ammonium ethanoate in the case of this reaction. My other products would be water and carbon dioxide. Now my ammonium salt, in this case ammonium ethanoate, would dehydrate on heating to form my amide, ethanamide, and water. And I've put the two equations on this slide. So now let's test your understanding of this with a practice question. So read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So question 1a is asking you to explain how propanamide can be formed from propanoic acid. And then it's asking you to write chemical equations to explain your answer. So this is a three mark question. So for the first mark, you need to say that you have to add ammonium carbonate to propanoic acid and you have to heat them together. So you would add ammonium carbonate to propanoic acid and heat and that gets you one mark. And then for the next two marks, you need to write chemical equations to explain the reactions taking place. So propanoic acid has the formula CH3, CH2, 
COOH. You're going to react it with ammonium carbonate, which is NH4 in brackets 2, CO3, and that's going to make an ammonium salt, CH3, CH2, COO, NH4. And your other products are going to be CO2 and H2O. Now we need to balance this equation. So we put a 2 in front of propanoic acid and a 2 in front of ammonium propanoate. And then that's balanced. And then ammonium propanoate, which is CH3, CH2, COO, NH4, would break up into the amide when you heat it up because it's dehydrated. So that would be CH3, CH2, CO, NH2, and H2O. And if you had those equations, you get one mark each for each correct balanced equation. Now for question B, it says ammonium salts have a tendency to split into ammonia and the parent acid on heating. This would prevent you getting a good yield of the amide. Explain why using excess carboxylic acid in the preparation of amides helps to prevent this. Well, if you add excess carboxylic acid, so in this case, excess propanoic acid, the equilibrium would shift to the left-hand side because of Le Chatelier's principle. And that means you would get more of the ammonium salt. So you get more ammonium propanoate. And therefore, you would get a higher yield of amide because the ammonium propanoate would dehydrate to form the amide propanamide. So having excess carboxylic acid shifts the equilibrium to the left-hand side, resulting in more of the ammonium salt and therefore more of the amide. So if you explain that the equilibrium would shift to the left-hand side and you get more of the ammonium salt and therefore more of the amide, you get one mark. So we've discussed how we name amides and how we prepare them. So now we're going to look at the reactions of amides. So the first reaction we're going to look at is the dehydration of amides to form nitriles. Now if you dehydrate an amide by heating it with phosphorus 5 oxide, P4O10, it gives the corresponding nitrile. Now water is removed from the amide group to leave a nitrile group, which is a C triple bond N, and the liquid nitrile is collected by simple distillation. Now if you start with a phanamide here, and you heat it up with phosphorus 5 oxide, you will get ethane nitrile. We have a dehydration reaction because water is removed from the compound, and ethane nitrile is CH3 C triple bond N. Now, another type of reaction you need to be aware of when it comes to amides is hydrolysis reactions. Hydrolysis reactions are reactions where bonds are broken by the action of water and hydrolysis can take place in acidic conditions or alkaline or basic conditions. So if you have an amide and you heat it strongly with dilute acid, you will get a carboxylic acid forming and this is acid hydrolysis. So for example, if we have a phanamide and we heat it with dilute hydrochloric acid, ethanoic acid is formed together with an ammonium salt. So if you're using hydrochloric acid, you would have ethanoic acid and ammonium chloride being formed. And if you use sulfuric acid, your salt would be ammonium sulfate that would be formed along with ethanoic acid. So here's an equation to represent this. A phanamide reacts with H2O and HCl because it's dilute acid that we need here for hydrolysis. Bonds are broken by the action of the water and we end up with ethanoic acid and ammonium chloride. Now in the A-level syllabus, we come across hydrolysis several times. Hydrolysis of an ester, hydrolysis of an amide, hydrolysis of a nitrile in acidic conditions always gives the same product. So you would get a carboxylic acid group forming for all three of those. So you need to remember that hydrolysis in acidic conditions is breaking bonds by the action of water and you're converting your amide, your nitrile and your ester all two carboxylic acid groups. Now hydrolysis reactions can also take place in alkaline conditions. So if we heat up an amide with aqueous sodium hydroxide, we would end up with a salt of a carboxylic acid and a sodium salt in this case, and ammonia gas being formed. So the amide group would change to COONA. So here we have a phanamide and sodium hydroxide 
and if I heat it strongly with aqueous sodium hydroxide, I end up with sodium ethanoate and ammonia. And I've converted my amide group to a salt of a carboxylic acid. Now I can hydrolyze an ester and a nitrile as well in alkaline conditions, and I will end up with the same product. So you have to remember that if you hydrolyze an ester, an amide, or a nitrile in alkaline conditions, you end up with a salt of a carboxylic acid. And if you use sodium hydroxide as the alkali, you will end up with a sodium salt of the carboxylic acid. Now, if I have an amide that undergoes alkaline hydrolysis by heating strongly with aqueous sodium hydroxide, I will get a salt of carboxylic acid and ammonia given off. And ammonia is a base with a pungent smell. And when you dissolve it in water, it forms an alkali, ammonium hydroxide. And if I want to test for ammonia, all I need to do is place damp red litmus paper near the gas and it will turn blue because ammonia is a basic gas. So now let's test your understanding with some practice questions. Here's our first practice question. Read the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So this first practice question is asking you to draw the full structural formula of the nitriles formed when the following amides are heated with phosphorus 5 oxide, P4O10. And the first amide was methanamide. So all that happens when you heat it with P4O10 is that you lose the two hydrogens in the NH2 group and you lose the oxygen in the C double bond O and you're left with a nitrile. So the nitrile that would form would be methane nitrile, H bonded to a carbon and a triple bond N. And in the second question, part B, we have butanamide. And if you remove the two hydrogens from the NH2 group and you remove the oxygen from the C double bond O, you'll be left with a nitrile, and that nitrile would be butane nitrile, and it would be a CH3 bonded to a CH2 bonded to a CH2, and then you'd have a C triple bond N. There's one mark for each correct product here. So here's our final practice question. Once again, read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answer. Now in this question, we have an aqueous solution containing sodium benzoate and benzamide. And it says a student was asked to suggest a simple chemical method to produce a solution containing only sodium benzoate and water. And he said that he would heat the mixture with aqueous sodium hydroxide. And it says, explain why this suggestion is correct. Well, if you heat the amide with sodium hydroxide, you're carrying out alkaline hydrolysis and the amide would be converted to the salt of the carboxylic acid, which would also be sodium benzoate. So it is correct because of that, because when benzamide is heated with aqueous sodium hydroxide, sodium benzoate and ammonia is formed, the ammonia would escape, and therefore you're left with a solution that only contains sodium benzoate. And I'll show you here with an equation, the reaction that's taking place. So we have benzamide, which is a benzene ring bonded to a C double bond O NH2. If that's reacted with NaOH, we have alkaline hydrolysis taking place and you'd be left with a benzene ring okay and that is bonded to a c double bond o ona and your other product is ammonia so that's why the statement is correct because it would convert to the sodium salt so that concludes this video lesson so after watching this video, you should now be able to name and draw the structural formula of both amides and substituted amides. You should also be able to explain how amides can be prepared from carboxylic acids and the preparation of substituted amides from the reactions of acid chlorides and primary amines. And finally, you should be able to describe the reactions of amides, including their hydrolysis and their conversion to nitriles using phosphorus 5 oxide. So that concludes our video. Please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. Rowe Chemistry, and our Twitter site, which contains lots of chemistry information and links, at Radar Chemistry.